Welcome to Talking Heads on U.S. and Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is The United Kitchens. Chef Ricky is not backstage yet. She's having some internet difficulties, so we will start the show without her and bring her on as soon as she gets here. So I have a few announcements to make, and the first announcement is to anyone and everyone who has something to promote, whether you have your business, a service, a product, a song, a film, a book, an event, we welcome you to our reunion event, which is May the 1st. We'll be live streaming for six hours, and anyone and everyone is welcome. We actually have six openings left, and what will happen is you will register on on Eventbrite and you will get a ticket that enables you to have 15 minutes to promote whatever it is that you're promoting. So it's not an interview, it's strictly a promotion. And I will be joined by Al Sini, we'll be co-hosting all six hours. So if you're interested in meeting the other people who are presenting as well as welcoming a new audience, and promoting your work, your product, your service, et cetera, please do go ahead and join us over on Eventbrite. I will share the link with you as well in just a few minutes. For those of you who don't know, in addition to founding and running USA Global TV, I also have another business, which is Dr. Jacqueline. And at drjacqueline.com, I offer courses to teach people to listen at an elevated level. So I am branded as the listening mentor, and I am a certified holistic life and career coach, a certified meditation teacher, and a certified yoga instructor. So if you're interested in learning how to listen at an elevated level, level, which means listening without judgment, listening without trying to provide a solution, listening without interrupting someone, and listening to have deeper connections, better relationships, and more authentic conversations, please consider going over to drjacqueline.com and joining our community of elevated listeners. What will this give you? Each Sunday or Monday at the latest, you will get a link to a 30 or 45 minute video that includes a guided meditation. It includes fitness tips, listening tips, as well as some education on various topics discussed here on the platform at USA Global TV. So again, that's very easy to join us. It's drjacqueline.com. Okay, now I'll just share some information about some new shows that we have. Some have recently started, some are going to start. Our first show is a Christianity show, and we are going to feature people who are involved with the church. We are also going to be featuring people who have had an awakening in their life by finding faith. And it's all meant to bring hope and inspire others. So look for that coming soon. Our show, What's Trending, started two weeks ago with Kathy Fulton. This show is on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And each week it's a different topic. So this is really a popular show. So do join us. Our other show is, a uh, new one is Leadership of the Heart. And this show is all about leaders who are heart-centric and they share ways that you can motivate and engage your business, your organization, your team members, and how you can all be rowing in the same direction, so to speak. We also have our show, which is the United Kingdom News and Culture. And here we feature our expert correspondents from the UK. We have Helena Shard, Ian Pelham Turner, and Simon McDonald. We have a platform which is for experts from around the world. 
These people are part of our Talking Heads expert presenters team, and they have at least five years experience in their industry. They are excellent presenters. They are recognized as leaders and experts in their field. This is the Talking Heads platform. Talking Heads have their own 30 minute show, which I open and close for them. And they present topics in groups of six episodes. So for example, one of our experts is Red O'Loughlin and he presented six weeks on longevity. And now he's doing his next 12 on how to publish your book for free. So that leads me to our new show that's starting next week. It's April the 12th for our first episode. It's the Talking Heads panel. So of our team of Talking Heads, these five people are going to be on the Talking Heads panel and they will meet and be given a topic literally five minutes before the show starts. And then they will have an open forum to share what it is that they think. And I'll moderate when things start to get a little heated. So on that panel, we have Diane floyd Bame, Red O'Laughlin, Al Sini, Mariska Dupree, and Roland Friedel. And just a side note for Roland, he's been living on the island of Mallorca for years. And after a lot of soul searching and uh, personal development work, he decided that he wanted to leave it behind and get in his RV and drive through Europe for at least a year. So Roland joins us from his RV now uh, for the two shows that we do together. So that's kind of fun also. So they are some of the new shows that we have. And right now we're going to take a break and I'm going to touch base with Chef Ricky and see how things are going. She's going to be able to join us. OK, so right now I just want to spotlight a, a couple of things. First, I want to share a clip. This is from my vocal coach. Her name is Madeline Chan. She is over in London. She's an international award winning singer songwriter. She's also a producer and an author and she is a vocal coach and she will really help open you up it's amazing what these voice lessons have done for me it's not specifically about my voice but it's about getting your masculine and female energy in alignment and also being able to express a lot of things that we repress during the day or during our lives so singing is really great for that so we're going to take a look at her clip and then we'll look at a couple of other sponsorships and then i'll come back and give you an update so here's madeline chan in follow love What you give me is just not enough I need a love to take me higher And higher And higher Every step I take I feel more awake Getting closer now I feel so alive Stopping me This is how I live Ever closer now Just follow love a world of wonder. Every day it reminds us of its beauty. It touches us, teaches us, and astounds us. But it also warns us that what we throw away does not go away that higher temperatures mean a lot more than longer summers, that we can no longer take life as we know it for granted. We are at a unique stage in our history. Never before 
have we had such an awareness of what we are doing to the planet. And never before have we had the power to do something about that. We Take a moment. 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 So I've had the privilege of photographing some incredible people over the years. And during each shoot, I've asked the subject to close their eyes and take themselves to a peaceful place just for a few seconds. I've found that this really helps to refresh the energy between the camera and the subject. They had an energy that was quite special and quite different from the rest of the shoot. The collection grew and now it feels the right time to use it for something good. I think it'd be amazing if we could help to raise awareness and involve people in the discussion about mental health. So what we're asking to do is for everyone to upload their own self-portraits. All of these portraits will become part of a massive artwork. I'm really excited to see this project go from hundreds of pictures to thousands of pictures. Essentially, uh, an ever-evolving artwork that says we're all in this together. Close your eyes and take a moment. The world is changing and your company needs to change with it. Whether it's procurement, employment, marketing or customer service, it's now more important than ever for your business processes to be inclusive to people with disabilities. Hi, I'm Trish Robichaud with Changing Paces and I'm here to tell you that making your business processes accessible to people with disabilities is simply good for business. Accessibility and inclusion are the law. But here's what you may not realize. Disability inclusion is an opportunity, not an obstacle. In fact, a recent four-year study found that companies that fully embraced disability inclusion had a 30% higher profit margin than those that didn't. Your investment in staff disability inclusiveness training can pay off in areas like innovation, brand recognition, as well as customer and employee satisfaction and loyalty, not to mention productivity and profitability. At Changing Paces, we can help you make that happen for your business. Our experts have real life experience that will help your team gain insight and best practices they won't get anywhere else. And we can help you Create a customized training program to bring your organization into compliance with local and industry regulations. This topic is very close to my heart for me, very personal. Dealing with the challenges of MS for the past 25 plus years and having lost my job as a result of my diagnosis back then, I've made it my mission to bring disability out of the darkness and create a more welcoming environment for people of all abilities. As a pioneer in the field of inclusiveness, our company developed and implemented one of the first accessible customer service training programs in Canada. We provide complete online training solutions that blend with your branding, your policies, and your systems. Between our disability subject matter experts and our technical partners, we can provide you with both the content and the platform that you need to create an evergreen training program that empowers your people while it transforms your organization and your company culture. In short, we make disability inclusion easy in all parts of your business. Contact us now for a quote or consultation at info at changingpaces.com. Your bottom line will thank you.
everyone, and welcome back to USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and this show is the United Kitchens. And I'm happy to report that Chef Ricky is backstage. I'll be bringing her out momentarily. I also just want to announce that uh, this is hot off the press. USA Global TV is proud to announce the live stream. Radio stream can be heard on MyTuner radio app or MyTuner-radio.com. This is in addition to listening on Business Talk Radio. Their website is BusinessTalkRadio1.com. So we are truly USA Global TV and radio. All right, so we hope you can listen or watch from wherever you are. I'm going to bring Chef Ricky out and then turn the stage over to her because we've already lost about 20 minutes. So welcome, Chef. Nice to see you. Oh, good morning, Dr. Jeff. <laughs> Hi, good morning. I'm How going to go backstage and let you have the rest of the show because I know we're behind and this way you'll be able to get the meal out there for everyone. So thank have a great so show. And thank you everyone for putting up with my technical glitches. Just sometimes the internet or the computer or whatever it is doesn't really cooperate. So when that happens, we punt. Anyway, good morning. My name is Ricky McKenna. I am a certified nutritionist, have been for 20, almost three years. And I love food. And one of the things that is near and dear to my heart is the idea of food as medicine. And today, um, I've been working with um, oh, individuals and corporations and companies, just to give you a little bit of background for the last 23 years, including United Healthcare and the American Diabetes Association and a number of other large and small corporations. I'm here for the individual, I'm here for the whole group. And so today what we're gonna do is prepare a wonderful vegan meal that is very simple. You can do all of it or part of it. And then it all comes out to everybody who's tasted this has flipped over it. They've really said it's been delicious. So it is actually roasted cauliflower that has a wonderfully pungent taste. And I'll show you the secret to that with a salsa that's made with mango, black beans, onions, rice, lentils, and jalapeno, of course, with a little, to give it a little bit of zing as well as um, olive oil, lime juice, and some orange juice. So we've got a whole bunch of different flavors going to please your palate. But the best part, excuse me while I turn this down, this is called the pot of boiling water. And we will show you what you do with what the leftover cauliflower when you try to cut cauliflower, a big head of it, into a steak. And that's what we've done here. I've got several pieces already cut. And what I'll do is show you how they look once you've cut them. They're slices of cauliflower and they're flat on either side. And so we're gonna take those and put them into a, on a baking uh, pan. Like you can use a cookie sheet, you can use a, a shallow um, baking tin, that's fine. I've lined it with parchment paper so that it doesn't stick. If you're using a regular pan, you can also put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of it, and that will help it not stick as well. Now, here's some of the other pieces that I've cut. You can see one side is rounded, one side is flat. I don't know if you can see that there. And at any rate, I'm gonna cut that again. I'm gonna slice it one more time, and I'm gonna slice it in half. When you do this with a head of cauliflower, you take the whole head, which I've already cut, and it looks like a big brain just sitting there. And you slice directly down from the top, slice it in half, and then slice one inch thick steaks. And of course it will fall apart and I'll show you what we're gonna do with the parts that fall apart. So I'm gonna take these pieces and carefully put them in with the flat side down. I'm gonna get another piece and get the flat sides of it and put it down on the baking pan. You can line it, as I say, with foil or with a parchment, which will keep it from sticking. I've got some bigger pieces here. You can see the flat part. There we go. And I have been asked many times for some vegan meals that are really different and delicious. So here's one of them. And here's a bigger piece. Here's what the cauliflower part of it will look like. So you, what you do is you slice it. I think you can see this. Here we go. You slice it this way. 
There we go. And of course, it's going to fall apart. So we'll just take those parts and put the flat part down. I'm going to slice this one in half again. There we go. So we've got some flat pieces facing us. And put as many as I can into this lovely little pan. Then I'm going to take what's left here and put it with the rest of the left cauliflower. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a second. And when you're just a hint, when you're washing something like this in the uh, sink and you put it in a big or a big bowl where it gets full of water and then you shake it out and you have little tiny pieces floating around. The best way to collect them is to take a strainer and just like you're cleaning out a fishbowl and you take all the little pieces with you. So we're going to take these pieces in just a minute and do something wonderful with them. Meantime, the first thing you do with to roast your cauliflower is to take olive oil, take a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and a full tablespoon of curry powder, just plain curry powder. If you choose, you can use a hot curry powder or curry powder that's got some other things in it. But curry is a combination, so I'm going to use just the curry powder. And that's a tablespoon and two tablespoons of olive oil. And mix that up with my pastry brush. Very handy little gadget. So we're going to mix up, just combine the olive oil with the curry powder. And that's what I'm going to spread all over my cauliflower. Just spread it roughly over nicely. Cover everybody's little piece there and get that going my oven is preheated to 400 to bake at 400 that's uh centigrade excuse me fahrenheit i have to figure out what it is centigrade i'll give you that in a minute so we have the cauliflower is covered over with nothing more than the olive oil and the curry powder and we're going to take that and pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes. There we go. I'm going to time that. In the meantime, we will prepare the salsa. I have already prepared it, but what I'll do is show you how beautiful it looks. It's a combination of all those wonderful things that I said, the black beans and mango. You take a can of black beans, I use organic black beans, and drain them and rinse them. Then you take your mango and cut it up into whatever amount of pieces you want, bite-sized pieces or a little bit bigger. I like things for a salsa in bite-sized pieces. Then I took my red onion, and this is its neighbor, but we did cut up just a little slice of the red onion. I'm going to cut a little slice off to use as a garnish shortly. And... Um, cooled rice. I use brown rice. You can use white rice, whatever you prefer. I like the brown rice. And lentils. I use green lentils and you use about half a cup of the lentils and a full cup of the rice. So you've got a great combination that gives you starches. It gives you protein between the beans and the lentils. And you've got the incredible flavors of the mango and the red onion. And then you add chopped up cilantro. And I happen to have cilantro in my garden. So that's one of the things that I chopped off this morning and washed. It's just lovely. Nothing smells better than fresh herbs, except maybe garlic and onions and olive oil cooking. So there we have the salsa. Now, in order to use um, different flavors in the salsa, I also used yellow pepper, yellow um, sweet peppers. You can use red peppers. It's prettier. It's got a lot more color. So if you're into what, whichever peppers you prefer, that's what I usually use. I happen to love yellow, orange, and red peppers. I don't care for green peppers. But if they're your favorites, put them in. But this one does call for the red peppers and the yellow. So that's all the goodies that are in there. And then you squeeze about two tablespoons of lime juice and two tablespoons of fresh orange juice as well. Now you can use a fresh orange and peel it. You can um, slice it and just use your juice. 
and then you can use it as a garnish. So there's your choices on that. Now I'm going to take my cauliflower, all the lovely little pieces that we have here, and several choices for this. You can put some of the smaller pieces, bite-sized pieces, into a salad. They're absolutely wonderful, crunchy. But what I'm going to do with them is because we happen to love mashed cauliflower in place sometimes of mashed potatoes. So this is one of the best things to use to create this, the texture and some of the flavors of mashed potatoes, but not get the starch, the same amount of starch, nor is it a nightshade vegetable. And a potato is a nightshade vegetable, which can aggravate some arthritic conditions. Sometimes it does aggravate joints. So we are going to make mashed cauliflower. And I'm taking one of the handiest gadgets I have is a strainer. It's a, a strainer that goes into a pot. You can put it in open. You can close it. And what you do is you steam underneath this. So I'm going to take my cauliflower and actually I'm going to pour it over the water. I've got about an inch of water in the pot. I'm going to set the strainer in there and then pour my cauliflower in. And turn it up again to high. Put a little bit of salt in with it, not a lot, but salt does help bring out the flavors. And then I'm going to cover it and let it bring it to a boil. For actually, since it's in pieces, it will cook sooner. Normally, if you put in the large chunks of the cauliflower, It'll take a little bit longer to cook, but basically about 15 minutes once it starts to boil is fine. And I'll leave the cover on. You'll see it starts to steam, and that's when we know it's time to turn it down a little bit, let it just sit. In the meantime, what I would like to do is show you what the finished dish looks like, just to give you a hint of what we're going to have when all those goodies come out of the oven. The cauliflower gets beautifully browned. Here's your salsa, and here's some of my fresh cilantro out of the garden. And, of course, I just added a little avocado, slices of avocado, to make it pretty. And so if anybody has any comments or questions, um, Dr. Jacqueline, are we getting any comments today? <laughs> well, I guess not. Okay, so we'll um, go on interestingly. To put, I'm going to turn the cauliflower over in about 15 minutes. We don't have too much time after that. And then I will add a little more of the olive oil and curry on the other side. So I'm going to get that ready now. And if you don't have a measuring spoon, always use the top of the spice jar because it's easier to control all the stuff that goes in that way. Here we go. It's a technical term stuff. And so we'll mix that up and have it ready because when the little timer goes off, we'll just take our, our pan out and coat the other side. We'll turn over the cauliflower and coat the other side with it. And in the meantime, what I'd love to do is show you my new book. I know Dr. Jacqueline mentioned this, and I'm really delighted and proud of it. This is called Yes, You Can. Eat well and eat right. And the whole premise of the book is the idea of using real food. I have 19 foods listed in here that are you really need to buy organic simply because a lot of the conventionally grown ones are produced with a lot of pesticides and herbicides, which you do not want to put in your body. And even if there's an acceptable, we put that in quotes, level of um, either pesticide or herbicide or some sort of side that's put in um, when it's grown, when the vegetable or fruit is grown, they do accumulate. And this is something that people need to understand. So my little book talks to that. It speaks to the different foods and there's a recipe in there for every one of the foods, actually a couple of recipes per food that I haven't done on here, some I will do. But they're all in here for you to look for. And there's also some blank pages where you can put in your own notes. For example, here's the page on legumes and beans. And next to that, you can have your notes. 
and I've got things about carrots and oh yes, signature foods. Something I want to speak to, which is a lot of fun if you have children. Signature foods can be used to create different animals. And I know that everybody can take a banana and spread out the, the peel and you stick a couple of cloves in the top of it and you've got an octopus. But here's some other ideas. I think you can see these. There's a cabbage piggy. And if you also take the, I'm not sure, yeah, there it is. You can see we've played with the ears with pieces of cabbage and the eyes. You can either use cloves or an olive, a couple of olives on two picks and create food and the advantage to doing something like this and here's the um excuse me trying to figure out which way the camera works there we go i don't know if you can see it's a hummingbird it's flying i haven't made it sit yet and the hummingbird is made from a chili pepper a red chili pepper into which we've carefully inserted some pieces of celery leaves to make it look like wings and if you do that with things like an orange, you can take um, usually a navel orange. It's really a lot of fun. You kind of use where the stem was as the nose, and then you can add eyes with cloves or a number of different things and carve a funny mouth or use toothpicks for different things. My kids used to do this, and then we'd stand them up on toothpicks on the table as decorations. And then, of course, they got to eat whatever the fruit or the vegetable was. So there's some ideas for that in the book, as well as great recipes that are very simple and very easy to do and good for you. And that can be purchased on Amazon, along with there is an ebook on Amazon as well. And it, it, right now you can purchase the ebook for only $1.99 US dollars. And let's see how we're, we're starting to steam here. So our cauliflower is steaming. And what I'm going to do with the cauliflower is something I usually do with mashed potatoes. I have wasabi powder. So once those are done, we're going to take them out and we're going to mash the cauliflower and make it into wasabi cauliflower. Using I use wasabi, I use a little olive oil and butter, or you can just use butter, olive oil, salt and pepper, whatever it is you like in mashed potatoes. Do them exactly the same way. And the, the thing that you have to be careful of is there's about an inch of water in there that's steaming the cauliflower. Make sure you drain it completely because the cauliflower itself has enough moisture, water in it. It's one of those nice, juicy, watery vegetables once it's steamed that if you leave the water in it, you'll get mush. Same as with potatoes. So you take out most of the water, all of the water, actually. And then just, uh, I'm going to mash it right there in the pot. So you'll be able to see it. So in the meantime, actually, you can eat the salsa. I had some company this weekend. And one woman does not eat certain foods. And she did not eat the salsa. But she loved the cauliflower all by itself, and she was raving over the flavors. So let's tell you what's in curry, just plain curry powder, organic curry powder. It is a combination of fenugreek, coriander, turmeric, red pepper, and onion. So that's where all your flavor comes from, just using the curry powder and the olive oil and everything emulsifies and gets beautifully together and creates an absolutely delicious taste. And we did eat it warm and you can eat it, certainly eat it warm. If you take it out once it's done, we'll flip it over and, and I, we won't have time to let you see what completely done, but this is actually how it looks. And you can eat it either warm or it's absolutely delicious cold. Cuts beautifully easily with a fork. So it's just an absolutely, I, I think it's an absolutely wonderful substitute for meat. So, and of course you get your protein when you put the salsa together with it and a little bit with the avocado. So there we have that. Let's see how we're doing here. I'm gonna see if that is ready yet. Nope. The cauliflower should easily crumble or smash, smush, smash, when you touch it. But we still have a few minutes to go there. And so 
Um, the other thing that I'd like to talk about is nutritionally what's going on. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody is having problems with any more allergies now from foods. Because what I'm hearing from clients is that they're finding that they have more and more things to which they have become either allergic or extremely sensitive. One thing that I do have is another substitute for dairy, for milk, and that is Sherry's Hazel Cream. And that can be found uh, at sherryshazelcream.com. It's C-H-E-R-I-S-H-A-Z-E-L cream, C-R-E-A-M dot com. And it comes in a little pod that you open. It's a nut butter, actually, that gets reconstituted in your blender with water and it becomes milk. And if you'll excuse me for two seconds, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. There's my bottle of hazel cream milk. And if you want it thicker, I used 30 ounces of water to put it together. If you want it thicker, then you use less water and you really have a cream that you can use for pasta sauces or any kind of sauces that call for milk or dairy. You can use the hazel cream. And of course, you can always use almond milk, coconut milk. Um, I'm not a fan of soy simply because I think soy is too pro-estrogen and I find that a lot of people have allergies to soy. And speaking about the allergies, please, 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 if you do nothing else, when you go grocery shopping, read labels. Um, as a nutritionist for 23 years, I find that people don't read the labels and they get things home and they're preparing their food and they start eating and all of a sudden the allergy hits or the sensitivity hits. One woman told me that she didn't understand why she was getting her allergy to wheat was aggravated because they were eating something with salsa. And it turned out that the particular salsa she had bought at the stores had wheat in it as a filler. So please, please read labels. And if you don't understand what something is like vegetable something protein, that could be MSG, which is monosodium glutamate. Um, yeah. At any rate, there are certain things to which people have sensitivities that can be found sneaky in the labels. And unfortunately, some of us are in such a rush or in the grocery store that we don't read it all. Please read your labels. Even if it takes you five minutes longer to get through the grocery store, that's fine. You won't have any problems when you get home. Or you'll have less problems when you find out what's in things that you didn't want. So... With that, I think we can check our cauliflower again. Yeah, I think we're just about there. Aha. All right. I'm going to take it off here and drain it carefully. And make sure we get all the water out. And then we have a trick. The trick is to get the strainer out before we start mashing the cauliflower. And that's where we use another handy dandy little gadget, silicone pot holders. And we've got about two seconds before I have to turn over the other cauliflower. So I'm just gonna reach into the post and turn this around and dump the cauliflower from the strainer into the pot. And I know you can hear that. So while I have my pot holder in hand, I'm going to take the cauliflower out and flip it over. And since I'm using small pieces, by the way, close your oven in between so it doesn't lose the heat. I'm just going to turn it over. Oh, they're getting crumbly. And then we'll put some of that wonderful curry and olive oil combination on the other side and pop it back in the oven. And we'll come out looking, and it smells divine, by the way. Okay, here we 
we go. And if you're using the larger pieces, of course, a big spatula is great. But since I had the little pieces on here, this is what I'm using. go and of course the parchment paper does help because the cleanup is a lot less difficult it makes it very simple so I'm going to put just a little bit more of the curry sauce on here making sure I mix it up from the bottom of the little dish and then we'll pop it back in the oven for another 10 15 actually i think this will be done in about 10 minutes since it's smaller pieces but when you have the big thick steaks that are cut to about an inch in in width they take a little bit longer to tenderize so okay back we go into the oven and now my handy dandy little cauliflower or potato masher. Today it's cauliflower. And all I'm going to do is mash. And I'm going to put a little bit of the olive oil in there. Just a wee bit. Oops. We've got live cauliflower here. You can use butter. And actually, since it's a nut milk, I'm going to use just a little bit of the hazel cream. Maybe a little over a tablespoon. Because mixing in the wasabi is going to give it a totally different flavor. And of course, you can use a blender if you have an immersion blender that works. Or put it in your blender however you like it. I like it with a little more texture. And I'll show you how this works in just a minute. Now I'm going to take my wasabi and just about a half a tablespoon, a little bit more than half a tablespoon level. And when you're doing something with a, a little, I don't know if you can see the can. It's got a top on it that's like a piece of aluminum. And that's beautiful for measuring so that you get a flat top when you measure something. So I'm going to sprinkle my wasabi and continue to mash. And I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil because normally I would dilute the wasabi with water, but the water content of the cauliflower is fine. Going to be, oh, it's starting to smell like wasabi. Yummy. And of course, you can use this as, a, as an accompaniment to any other meal, whether it's meat, fish, chicken, same as you would um, wasabi mashed potatoes. So we'll have wasabi mashed cauliflower. And that's about all the effort it takes to get it ready. And just to let you know, it really does look pretty. I'm going to take my spoon. And it's just like mashed potatoes. They have a little bit more texture to them than the mashed potatoes. And as I said, you can whip them up. I would use probably a little more olive oil or even sesame oil with the um, wasabi powder, which will give it a little more of an oriental flavor. So here we have wasabi mashed cauliflower. And uh, I'm going to be brave enough to taste it. So <laughs> I'll let you know how that tastes. Ooh, Ooh interesting. Mm -hmm. That has some zing. So there's our cauliflower. What to do with the leftover cauliflower besides putting the pieces into a salad, as well as the broiled or baked roasted cauliflower 
So you have the basis for three different things to go into a meal, actually four. And the absolute, the wonderful part about this is, as I said, you can eat the cauliflower hot or cold. And of course the salsa is cool. And the mashed cauliflower with the, the wasabi in it, um, I have a gentleman in my life who likes to eat it cold as well as warmed up. So like hot mashed potatoes or cold mashed potatoes. And so what I would do now is let's see how our cauliflower is doing. And we uh, run out of time, Dr. Jacqueline. I've, I've lost you there. Yes, you we're, we're out of time, but keep going. I think my computer is doing strange things. I think it's my internet. You have to forgive me if this isn't working perfectly well. I don't know if it's my internet or the connections or what it is, but we got the food. So, and we've got my book. Again, it's on Amazon and it's Yes, You Can Eat Well and Eat Right. So I'm not preaching to the, the choir. You eat the food that you like. Take a look at this, look through it, um, just have fun with it. It's a fun book. It's meant to help you understand what food is, there's some history, why we call dishes Florentine when they have spinach in them, among other things. And if Popeye can eat it, you can too. And have your kids work with you on this as well. So that is on Amazon. Thank you. And let's see, where's Dr. Jacqueline? As you can reach me on uh, either my phone, I will answer the phone. Actually text me at 970-618-7607 or you can reach me at ricky at rickymckenna.com. It's on the bottom of your screen. And my other show is rickyskitchen.net. And we're on on Thursdays and sometimes I have a guest and we'll have a guest uh, later on this month. We're gonna have some more people on United Kitchens as well. So we all get together because of the love of food and nourishment. And I love to have people over and feed them. That's um, just who I am. <laughs> and so enjoy. And I think Dr. Jacqueline's trying to get back in. That little thing is going around. Oh, no, I'm here. And if, if she never gets back here, I thank you very much for joining us on the United Kitchens. Ah, there you are. I, I've been here. <laughs> so, oh. so thank you everyone for watching. And uh, we're just glad that you're here. Ricky, thank you for pulling through against technology evil and um, appreciate the fact that you persevered. So uh, wishing you a lovely weekend. And thank you to everyone. We will be coming back in less than nine minutes with the listening mentor. And our guest is Caroline Heward from London. She's thank great. you, Ricky, for being here. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. And have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Hearty Thanks. Appetite. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you again next week. I'll see you hopefully in less than nine minutes. Bye. Bye.